Welcome to Wingate series of video tutorials. In this video, I am going to show the GPAC 2012 pharmaceutical calculations. So let us start with the first question on Tmax. What will be the approximate Tmax of a drug exhibiting Ka of 2 or inverse and Ka of 0.2 or inverse? The options are A. 1.2 R, B 2.4 R, and C 4.8 R, and D 2.0 R. So first of all, let us start with what is C max and T max. C max is the maximum concentration of the drug that reaches into the plasma after administration into the body. So here you can observe the C max is the peak plasma concentration. And T max is the time required for a drug to reach the peak plasma concentration. So this is the T max, where the maximum concentration is achieved in the plasma. Now at C max, the rate of absorption is equal to rate of elimination. So that's why the curve shows a plateau phase. Hence here, the dC by dt, the change in the concentration of the drug in the plasma with respect to time, is equal to zero. So you can observe here the dc by dt is equal to zero. Therefore, the rate of absorption is equal to rate of elimination, and k into e to the power of minus k into t is equal to k into e to the power of minus k into t. So solving this equation, we will get the t nothing but t max is equal to 2.303 into log of k by k whole by K minus K. Now let us go to the question. What is the data given? K A absorption rate constant is given as two R inverse, and K E the elimination rate constant is given as point two R inverse. Now what is the formula to be used? Just we have seen the T max is equal to two point three zero three into log of K A by K E whole by K E minus K E. So now let us see the solution. So if we are going to substitute these values in the given equation, now the T max is equal to 2.303 into log of 2 by 0.2 whole by 2 minus 0.2, which gives 2.303 into log 10 by 1.8. So solving this, we will get 1.27 R. So the approximate value. From the given options is 1.2 R. So in the question it was asked approximate value. So approximate value is 1.2 R. Right. So now let us go to the another question on the adjustment of the tonicity. How much quantity of the sodium chloride is required to make 30 ml of a 2% isotonic drug? Sodium chloride equivalent is 0.20 of the solution. So option A is 0.60. B is 0.27 and C is 0.15 and D is 0.12. All these units are in the grams. Now, how can we adjust the tonicity? The tonicity can be adjusted by the four methods: cryoscopic method, sodium chloride equivalent method, white Vincent method, and Sprouse method. The given question is related to the sodium chloride equivalent method. So, according to the sodium chloride equivalent method. If the sodium chloride equivalent of a drug is given as E, one gram of the given drug is equivalent to E grams of the sodium chloride. If we take X grams of the drug, so equivalent to E into X grams of the sodium chloride. So now let us again go for what is the data given in the question. Sodium chloride equivalent E is given as 0.20, and volume of the final solution V is equal to 30 ml. And the concentration of the final solution is given as two percent. Now, first of all, let us see what is the amount of the drug present. 100 ml of the solution contains two grams of the drug because the concentration is given as two percent. Now, the 30 ml of the solution contains 30 into 2 by 100, that is 0.6 grams of the drug. So, the entire solution is having 0.6 grams of the drug. Now, sodium chloride equivalent of the drug present. So according to the sodium chloride equivalent, one gram of the drug is now equal to 0.2 grams of the sodium chloride. But we are having only 0.6 grams of the drug in the solution. So 0.6 grams of the drug in the solution is equal to 0.6 into 0.2, that is 0.12 grams of the sodium chloride. Now 
we have the drug which is equivalent to 0.12 grams of the sodium chloride. And we know that isotonic weight of the sodium chloride for 100 ml of the solution is 0.9 gram. We know that it is 0.9% weight by volume. So isotonic weight of the sodium chloride for 30 ml of the solution because our final volume is only 30 ml it will be 0 0.9 into 30 by 100 that is 0 0.27 grams. So if we add, if we, we require 0 0.27 grams of the sodium chloride to be isotonic with the solution. But already that the drug is representing 0 0.12 grams of the sodium chloride because the drug is equal to 0 0.12 grams of the sodium chloride. So the sodium chloride required to be added is 0 0.27 minus 0 0.12 that is 0 0.15 grams. So the answer is C. So let us see a simple formula without calculating all these directly substituting the equation we will get the right uh, answer. So according to sodium chloride equivalent method the weight of the sodium chloride to be added W is equal to 0.9 minus E into C into V by 100 where E is equal to sodium chloride equivalent of the drug and C is the concentration of the drug solution and V is the final volume of the drug solution. Now let us see how the question, how the answer can be obtained. So according to the question, E is equal to 0.2 and C is equal to 2% and V is equal to 30 ml. Now substituting the equation, we get W is equal to 0.9 minus 0 0.2 into 2 into 30 by 100. So the answer will be 0.15 gram. So this is a simple formula, we can directly substitute in the equation and we can get the right answer. So now let us take question on the half-life. In a pharmacokinetic model depicted in the following scheme, what is the half-life of the drug if the apparent volume of the distribution of the drug is 25 liter? So here in this diagram we can see that 250 mg of the drug is given by the IV root and its elimination rate constant is 0.173 R inverse. So option E is 1.7 R and B is 2 R and C is 4 R and D is 3 R. So now the given data indicates IV bolus administration. So it was given as 250 mg IV root. And again the figure indicates the one compartment model because only the single compartment, the central compartment was shown in the diagram. And accretion is first order. So half-life is independent of the initial dose. So what are the dose we are going to use? The half-life is independent. And the half-life depends only on the elimination rate constraint. Now the half-life is equal to 0.693 by K that is the elimination rate constant which is equal to 0.693 by 0.173 which gives the 4 as the answer. So the right option is C. So this question was given some extra data but the answer is very simple. Here we have to calculate the half-life which depends only on the elimination rate constant. Right? So we got the answer as 4 that is option C. Now let us go to the question on sustained release. What will be the maintenance dose of a sustained release 12 hour formulation of drug X exhibiting one compartment kinetics with a half life of 6 hours and plasma concentration steady state is 6 microgram per ml and volume of the distribution is 30 liter and oral bioavailability of 80 percent. Here option A. 249.48 gram, option B 225.48 gram, option C 311.85 mg and option D 281.85 mg. So for one compartment model, the maintenance dose is given by CSS into CL into tau by F where CSS is the steady state concentration and CL is the clearance and tau is the dosing interval and F is a fraction of the dose absorbed. Now you can see what is the data given. 
CSS is equal to 6 microgram per ml and volume of the distribution is equal to 30 liter and tau the dose interval is equal to 12 hours and T half is equal to 6 hours and F is equal to 80 percent that is 0 0.8. Here you can observe the steady state concentration is given in the microgram per ml where the volume of distribution is given in the liters. So we have to convert the units so that they are in the uniform way. So let us convert the steady state concentration into the liters. So 6 microgram per ml is equal to 6 mg per liter. Now if we see the formula the maintenance dose is equal to CSS into clearance into tau by F. Here we are not having the data about the clearance. Instead of the clearance we were given the volume of distribution and the half life. Now we have to calculate the clearance. So let us see the calculation of the clearance. So clearance is equal to 0.693 into volume of distribution by T half. So substituting the values in the equation, we will get the clearance is equal to 0.693 into 30 by 6 which gives 3.465 liter into R inverse. So now we have calculated the clearance and we have the CSS as well as tau and F values in our hand. So we can directly calculate what is the maintenance dose. So this is the data given we have and data obtained is clearance which is 3.465 liter into R inverse. So the maintenance dose is equal to 6 into 3.465 into 12 by 0.8. So we will get 311.85 mg. Hence the right answer is option C. Now let us go to a question on the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Based on the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, at what pH value a weak acid would be 99.9% .9 ionized? At pH equal to pKa plus 3, at pH equal to pKa minus 3, at pH equal to pKa minus 1, at pH equal to pKa plus 1. So for weak acid, HA is ionized as H plus and A minus. So the weak acid which is ionized is represented by HA and the acid which is ionized is represented by A minus. So now the acid dissociation constant K for the given equilibrium is equal to H plus into A minus by HA in the concentration terms. Now the henderson hasselbalch equation will be pH is equal to pKa plus log of ionized by unionized that is A minus by HA. Now what is the data given? The ionized is equal to 99.9% so unionized will be 100 minus 99.9 that is 0.1%. So if we substitute in the henderson hasselbalch equation pH is equal to pKa plus log of ionized by unionized that is 99.9 .9 by 0.1 so which gives pKa plus log of 999 which is almost approximately equal to log 1000 so log 1000 is equal to 3 so now the pH is equal to pKa plus 3 right so if we see a small tip for this solution we can remember these values and the henderson hasselbalch equation. The approximate percentage of the ionized weak acid and the henderson hasselbalch equation. If the percentage ionized is 90.9%, the pH is equal to pKa plus 1. If it is 99.0, the pH is equal to pKa plus 2. If it is 99.9, .9, the pH is equal to pKa plus 3. And if it is 50%, the pH is equal to pKa. So now uh, the question was asked on the third one, that is 99.9%. .9%, so the pH is equal to pKa plus 3. See here, observe all these are uh, varying with the 9, right? So for 1, it is 90.9. .9. 
and for 2 99.0 and for 3 99.9. Thank you for watching and keep watching more tips on the pharmaceutical calculations at Wingate.